Hey guys, GK here. So in this video, we're going to look at the key GCP services and compare those services with AWS services. Now the main component of any cloud service provider is compute. Now that's the best way of starting your cloud journey. So let's say that you have an app in on-premise or you have an app in your laptop. You know, first thing that you have to do is create a virtual machine on cloud and then move that app. So that's the best way of getting your hands dirty on any cloud service provider. So Google GCP has something called Google Compute Engine, which is equivalent to Amazon CC2. And the second key component of compute is containers. Now, any cloud service provider these days um, are trying to get their managed solution for containers. And Google, as you all know, has invented the Kubernetes platform. So they have their own managed platform, which is called Google Kubernetes Engine, which is equivalent to Amazon's EKS. And the third important component, which is serverless, where you have very less control of your infrastructure. And for instance, if you have to, if I have to take an example, let's say that you want to uh, deploy an application and not worry about like where the application is getting hosted or what is the compute of the application. So that's when you would choose a platform as a service. So the platform as a service for GCP is Google App Engine. So there are two versions of Google App Engine, uh, which is very important for the exam. So one version is standard edition. The other version is the flexible. So with standard, you have set of languages that are supported where you can use only those languages. But one advantage with flexible is you can also deploy your container in flexible. So either you can deploy your container using Google Kubernetes engine, or you can also deploy your container using GAE. Both has its pros and cons where containers when you deploy in GKE has more flexibility in the terms of you control your infrastructure, you can control the number of servers you want to scale in GKE versus uh, if you deploy a container in GAE, you have very less control of the scalability part of things, which is automatically controlled by GAE as a path solution. Now Cloud Functions is equivalent to Lambda in AWS and where it's an event-based solution let's let's say that you want to run something for a few minutes then it dies off it's a, which is very cost effective and so that's when you would use google functions now google app engine is equivalent to by the way elastic beanstalk in aws so in storage google has object storage which is equivalent to aws s3 and object storage is more like um, it's a system that manages the use of storage in the terms of you know objects or blobs Usually these objects are files, but it is important to note that the files are not stored in conventional file system. Now the block storage, on the other hand, is can be used as a persistent disk, and the block storage use, uh, uses a fixed, you know, data structure called a block to organize block. Block storage is used, commonly used in ephemeral or persistent uh, disk attached to VMs, which is equivalent to EBS volume in AWS. Now reduced availability storage is AWS S3 standard infrequent access. And archival storage is Amazon's Glacier. Now file storage is your NFS file system and in AWS, which is equivalent to AWS EFS. And it is in beta version at this point of time. And databases are the key component of your application. As you all know, when you move your VM, the next thing that you want to do is migrate your data to the database. GCP has Cloud SQL, which is equivalent to AWS RDS. And Cloud Spanner can be compared with Aurora in AWS. So in the realms of NoSQL, GCP has Cloud Five Store and Cloud Big Table. In AWS, we have DynamoDB. So in networking, Google has virtual networks, which is your internal GCP network. Um, in AWS, it is called a VPC, where you can manage your own network which is very important for the enterprise companies. So the load balancer is another crucial component to balance your load for the servers and to have a higher level solution. GCP um, has load balancer, which is called cloud load balancing, which is equivalent to elastic load balancing in AWS. Cloud interconnect is where you would like to connect your data center to GCP. It is like direct connect in AWS. Domain and DNS, where Google domains, where you can register your domains. Even now, you know, for instance, you can go to Google domains and register your domain 
and, and use that either for your blogger or you can also host your whole application in GCP and you know host from there. So cloud DNS is to register your DNS and the equivalent services in AWS are Route 53 for Google domains and cloud DNS. A cloud CDN which is a very important service for applications that are distributed across the globe where you want to serve the traffic uh, closer to the region uh, where your customers are and in AWS the equivalent service for cloud CDN is CloudFront which is Amazon CloudFront. So when it comes to management services, management services are uh, very important to manage the whole application inside the cloud. So these services will help you to deploy your application in the cloud as well as monitor that or uh, you know get the logs of the application. The key services in GCP for management services are the stack driver monitoring. Uh, in AWS it is equivalent to CloudWatch and for logging Again, it is stack driver logging, which is equivalent to CloudWatch logging. And deployment, which is infrastructure as a code, we, uh, in AWS we use AWS CloudFormation. And in GCP, it is Cloud Deployment Manager. So there are other important services in GCP, mostly related to the AIML, which are built on top of the compute services that we have covered today. So those services are not very much important for the exam, but those services are uh, very important in for GCP as most of the enterprises use AIML on GCP when compared to Azure or AWS. That leaves us to this question which I would like to ask you guys before uh, I end this video. And for exam point of view, we have to understand what services are used in which scenarios. And this question is around that. You can, you know, try attempting this question and Try to provide the answer in the comments below. So that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.